I think penalty kicks are brutal, uh, but it's part of the sport. It's part of the game. It's how we have to decide games. I'm, I'm not a big fan of PKs uh, because I think the beauty of uh, football is it's a team sport. You achieve things as a team that you can't achieve as an individual, and here it comes down to one individual's mistake. Nothing is more powerful than a club whose time has come, and this is a pair of clubs who have raised the bar in MLS on and off the field. It is fitting that they represent the first ever MLS Cup between two teams who were not a part of the league's origination in 1996. Well, John, it certainly is very cold down here on the pitch. Temperatures are around 23 degrees, but it feels a lot colder around 10 degrees because of the wind chill. Couldn't feel the feet at all. And I actually had gloves on before I was going to go play. And I was like, nah, I don't need them. Other guys are playing without them. And then I ran back to the bench and put gloves on because it was so cold. We were warming up. Brad Evans and I are juggling the ball and going back and forth. And as you're striking the ball and it's leaving your foot or your head, you see little icicles, you know, leaving the ball in midair. And you're like, whoa. You know, and it was, it was really strange. We both stopped at the same time. Did you see that? I've been in, in Toronto winter, so I, I knew it was going to be pretty cold. But uh, right before a warm-up, they, they watered the field. I, I, I was told there's some MLS rules that they have to water fields to some degree. And it, it left like an ice sheet on the field, and, and, and the ball almost wrapped itself in ice. And every, every shot that was coming your way, um, like after every save, I would look at my gloves, and there would be a layer of ice on my gloves. shores of Lake Ontario is underway. I think it was a scrappy game. A lot of playoff games are going to be like that. A cup final when both teams are a little nervous, um, especially the first 20 minutes or whatever, it's going to be scrappy. But I think most of the game was, was pretty scrappy. Um, we were on our heels for some of it for sure. Credit to Toronto. They did a, a great job coming at us and, and at home they put the, the pressure on us. But I think the longer it stayed 0-0 was in, in our um, and our benefit because they're at home, it puts a little bit more pressure on them. Roldan to win the ball, played ahead, Tol St. Rick, it's no one in the middle, Torres went to ground early, now the cross out to Dahl! I'm just glad I went because sometimes in situations like that you just you give up because you, you don't see yourself making that safe. But uh, thankfully I was somewhat balanced and I was able to, to kind of uh, push my momentum the other way pretty quickly and, and from that point on play catch up, um, keep my feet moving and somehow tip it out. I mean we knew Josie is strong in the air and, and he, he got up really well and I think he Probably put it, did the right thing, you know. Um, go go against my run, uh, where I came from. Make it as much as difficult for me as possible. We're going to penalties to decide MLS Cup 2016. It's now a, uh, a test of, of, of motion, emotional control. I mean, if you asked us at the beginning of the year or when we were struggling, if we would have taken going to PKs in the MLS final, we would have taken it in a heartbeat. Once you set your five guys, it's really up to them. You, you give them a, hey, concentrate, you know, pick your spot, you know, just don't change your mind at the last second. But really, the, the, the guys that we sent out there, we had plenty of confidence in. Brad and then you. Number two. Number two. You want in on these? Uh, I mean, I, I prefer not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You're in. What number are you on? Which one do you want? Three. Here's the order. Evans, Evans, Andreas, Flacco, Joven, and then Nico. Everybody understand that? Josie's first. Michael will be second. Ben third. Will fourth. Drew, you're fifth. Okay? We're coming. To PKs. Um, I could hardly watch him. It's not a crapshoot, it's not a coin toss. There is an art to control your body and mind in this moment. First of all, there's no pressure on the goalkeepers. The goalkeepers can only be heroes. All the pressure will be on these possibly 10 players who walk up to take a penalty. Josie Altidore, 15 goals in 19 games since returning from a hamstring injury in July. The first player in league history to score goals in five consecutive playoff games in one postseason. And he will step up first. Big sigh of relief. Put his whole body into that one. No fidgeting, no looking around, just very focused on the ball. Um, I picked my side before and uh, as I set the ball down, I looked right and I looked left, um, just to kind of let the keeper know that I'm not really potentially into just going one way. Um, I've only gone the other way a couple times and it's, and it's worked out, but it was more subconscious than me actually trying to go the other way. Um, so I, you know, I take my typical run up, take a breath, and uh, he moves on my, maybe I had one step left, one good stride left. He moves to his right, luckily, and so I just slot it bottom right and uh, stuck with my side, put it in the corner with some pace, and um, a great feeling, great, great feeling. And the captain now, trying to keep Toronto going. Saved! Well, it just might be Stefan Fry's cup. Johnny and Toronto back on the front foot. And just beyond the outstretched fingertips of Fry. Glenn Irwin, can he come up with a big moment to level things for Toronto? And that's a big moment. Johnson, who had to watch from the sideline. Two MLS Cups, he was a winner in it. What a season he's had. Needs to make this to keep things on level terms. MLS Cup winner on this field in 2010. Can he put Toronto on the verge? And the newcomer of the year needs to make this. If he misses, if Irwin saves, Toronto wins MLS He'll be taking this in the sixth round as we begin sudden death rounds. Off the bar, and Seattle now a kick away from winning it. And then Roman, out of all people, uh, a center back, you know. In fact, he actually, the practice the day before, we were playing small side of games and someone got fouled and he was like, I'm taking the PK and he actually ended up missing it. Roman Torres, what a beast he's been tonight. And now an opportunity with his foot to win MLS Cup for Seattle, which he has done. The Seattle Sounders have done it. MLS Cup winners in 2016.
it's crazy for, for me growing up in that town and, and just getting to watch this team for so long and to be a part of the, the first team to list that, that trophy was, was crazy. If you would have told me that we would have been in this position midway when we found ourselves second from bottom, I would have said no way. Um, could we have snuck into the playoffs? Maybe. Runs like this and be part of great groups like, like the group I'm part of today. Uh, these are few and far between and you have to value these moments. As you get older, you start realizing how hard it actually is to get to this place. You know, this the A final, let alone actually win it. We're, we're all blessed to be able to do for a living what we love to do, play soccer. Um, and, and that's great, that's, that should be a, enough as it is. Um, but, but some people are lucky and they get presented with huge opportunities like these uh, and, and uh, I feel honored that I, I had this opportunity, especially with my teammates, with, with the struggles we've gone through. So uh, uh, yeah, it's something that's gonna, that I'll remember for the rest of my life. for an MLS Cup rematch as the Seattle Sounders look to defend their cup against Toronto FC. One year ago, these two clubs clashed in dramatic fashion. After an intense 120 minutes dominated by Toronto, it was Seattle who took home their first cup on a penalty kick by Roman Torres. For me, revenge wasn't the word. Redemption was was a better one. Uh, after the after losing the final the way we did last year, um, we spent every single day this season working and and thinking about this idea of getting back to a final and giving ourselves another chance in front of our fans to to lift that trophy. I have nothing but respect for the Seattle Sounders organization and their team. But the MLS Cup this year was, was all about us, and I don't think it mattered who you lined up uh, on the other side of us in, in that match. We weren't going to let anybody stop us. So this conversation that this is the best team in MLS history, we shouldn't even be having it because they haven't finished the job. They have to win the day. They have to, be com they have to complete what they have done throughout the course of the season, but it's all worthless unless you finish it today. The fact is, there's a level of expectation for this club. At some point in this game, that level of expectation is going to go from motivation to pressure. They have to be able to handle that pressure. The fans are going to push them, but they have to stay disciplined. If they go chasing Seattle, they may get into trouble. This was even bigger than last year in a lot of ways because we grew as a team, we won the Supporters Shield, we won two championships, so the opportunity to, to kind of finish off the treble was, was something you don't get every day. A date with destiny. The red and the rave green. Is it going to be redemption or is it going to be a repeat in the rematch as we are underway? MLS Cup number 22. Oh, Michael Bradley opening things up with a ball towards Altidore. Lovely layoff and Osorio! First big save of the game required from Stefan Fry. Oh, what a ball that is, and Jovinko in the clear here, can he finish? No, he can't! Step 
Ben Fry did enough. He got a touch. Marshall was right there too. Yeah, but what is Chad Marshall doing? He cannot let that ball run free. After about the first 10 or 15 minutes on the field, the way we were playing, I thought there was only going to be one team to win it. And that was going to be us. That was going to be Toronto FC. We felt so good on the night. We were moving the ball so well. And I could just see the look on their faces that they, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to counter us. Good build up this by Toronto, Juvinko. From Altador, Juvinko! Well, Stefan Fry had to adjust. That was a shot that seemed to change its mind in mid-air from Juvinko. Across the line it goes. The shot is off from Delgado! And well, we've seen that picture before. What is it about this goal and Stefan Fry? Yes. Now shall not pass seems to be uh, his motto. There was definitely moments of deja vu, of thinking to yourself like, come on, this can't be happening again. And you know, it gets to the point where I think in the first half, we got to a point where we were shooting so many times, you get, we got discouraged a little bit. And then I think the halftime came at a good point because we couldn't score. I think you look around and I don't think anybody was frustrated, but in the sense where, man, just we just we just can't get it to go. Not even like, man, this is gonna uh, next year is gonna happen. Not even that. It was more of like, man, it's just it's, it's gonna be a lot harder than we thought. You know, we can't get it to go. And so the second half comes along, and we're missing chances, or whatever. But everybody's thinking of the next one, and that's when I knew that, regardless of the saves that Stefan keeps making, or you know how it's just not happened for us, I knew the game was going to open up by doing it in the first goal. The experience of having been there before, of having played in a final that had been uh, teetering on the edge like that, that, that was a big advantage. It's funny because I remember when Josie was in on goal, when, when I saw him on a breakaway, what was going through my head was how quickly we got the ball to that side of the field. And not a lot of people have talked about the fact that I think I counted it out. It was about 10 touches, 10 total touches between seven different players. Drew scooped up the, the loose ball, shoved it to me. I was able to shove it to Justin. Um, Justin played it, I believe, first time over to Victor, and then, and then Victor found Seba, and, and you know, Josie did a great job to kind of uh, curl his run a little bit and stay on side, and the pass from Seba was, was perfect. And, you know, as, as Josie's running it on goal, you're just thinking to yourself, uh, please, let this, let this be the one that, that hits the back of the net. You know, that goal is so funny on so many levels, um, because it just, it is everything that, of who we are. Um, just from the goal, from you know, the touch on Drew's point, from the sequence itself, um, you know, Greg always emphasizes playing forward. Every training session we do, it's, it's three touch max, so it's two touches basically, and you have to play forward, especially towards the end of the year. So that goal is beautiful because I'm sure Greg and the coaches were happy because it was all what they wanted, playing forward, uh, playing across the game channel, and, and, and making runs in behind. So I think they were really happy about that. And then, you know, I committed early to what I wanted to do. I got the ball in the breakaway, and I know Roman was coming. I know Joven was coming on my right, and I said, you know, Joven's fast, so I can't. 
I think he'll catch me if I keep trying to go to my right and try to shoot to my right. So I said, I'm going to try to set up a dink here, you know, because it's going to be on my left. Uh, you know, obviously it's going to be a little bit less accurate, but I know he's going to try to make himself big and go to ground. And that's what I did. I tried to set it up by taking the touch to my left and, and just trying to dink it over. I know if I got it over him that the whole goal was gaping and, uh, and that was that. Honestly, when, when Armando dribbled the keeper, I, I didn't... I didn't realize that the volley was coming to me because I think, okay, now we score 2 0 and then it's done. But then it was to the post and then the rebound, it was straight on, on my body. I, I even touched, I think, with this and this, but I put all my body in front because I was really close to the goal and then I scored. And the feeling is like, wow, we did it. It's 2 0, it's minute 93, 94, it's done. We are happy. I show my shirt because we were making jokes at home with my wife, with my friends, that if I score a goal at the end of the game, I will show, I will show my shirt like, here, I'm back, you know? I'm, I'm Victor Vázquez, I'm back. This could finish it here. They have numbers forward in abundance. Should they choose to go towards goal, which they do. It's Cooper, round he goes! Oh, it's back off the post and then in! That will do it! Bedlam at Beano Fields! February 2009, Victor Vasquez had a serious knee injury. 14 months of grueling rehab. He was considering retirement, but it was Barcelona greats, the Luis Enrique, Pep Guardiola that said, no, sir, don't give it up. On his right forearm, Adrian, he's got tattooed. Only the strongest survive. When the book is written about the greatest season in MLS history, Victor Vasquez will have his own chapter. It's the best feeling that a player can have to score in a final, to close the game and win the MLS Cup. Oh, Canada, no more! One step beyond for Toronto as they crown the best season in MLS history. Last year, they came up empty. This year, their cup is overflowing. They complete a remarkable domestic treble with the one that really matters. MLS Cup is Toronto's for the first time. What I have taken away from it is you remember the guys that you do it with and their faces and uh, the moments that that you have in in uh, in that time after the final whistle and, and the coaching staff and the organization and uh, just how much you go through together uh, in a season um, for it to all culminate in in a championship after a magical season is uh, there are no words to play in MLS your whole career and to go so many years without winning and be on good teams that haven't won and to be on supporter shield winning teams that haven't won you realize how hard it is to finally get to the end line and reach the goal the one that you've achieved the one that you've wanted to achieve for such a long time it's so fulfilling and to winning for those guys you just mentioned justin morrow who's been in the league so long um, stephen betashaw drew moore you know he, he he gave up a lot to come to toronto he picked us and so i'm happy to give those guys everything they wanted man they, they came to toronto to win to do something special and they did exactly that that a group of guys lived one of the worst moments of of, of our careers together and used that pain and heartbreak to, to drive us on every single day for, for the next year or for the next 364 days. We laid everything we had out there and when a, uh, you have a group that's able to, to commit to something in the way that we did, to commit to each other uh, and, and fulfill a, 
a dream to satisfy an obsession that had, had been there for, for a year. Um, that's, that's an incredible feeling. This third match is the grudge match, is the final chapter. It's definitely very crazy throughout the last four years playing against each other. Now the cross out to the What a save by Fry! Since the first final was just a bitter pill to swallow. And it was the motivation for us in 2017. I feel like Toronto has had the better of us in the last two games. Josie Altidore! That will do it! We haven't played to our potential. Oh, Canada, no more! And here we go for a third time, and it's really remarkable that two clubs have been able to stay on top while the league is continuing to evolve. It's difficult to repeat something three times. I think it's a rivalry of ambition. It shows that you have two clubs that are committed to doing everything possible to be successful. Now we have a chance to play at home in front of our fans and take a 2-1 lead. As fate would have it, they're the team standing in our way of lifting up another cup. La tercera vez era para definir la historia. Here we go again as Seattle and Toronto collide in Major League Soccer's grand finale for a third time in four years. I think to finally be hosting the cup at home is massive. It felt big. It felt like MLS Cup should feel like. It felt like a Super Bowl. This was their chance on their home turf in front of their fans to be the pride of Seattle once again. The amount of people and the amount of energy that was walking into the building was just unbelievable. The opportunity to play in finals, it doesn't come around every day. You can go your whole career and never play in a final, never win anything for our group. You know, we've played in a lot of big games and, and we, we understand how special they are. Being consistent is hard to do in pro sports. The drive to make sure that we're always competitive, that we're always looking to win trophies, win championships, that's kind of part of the DNA of the club. Toronto and Seattle have a big time reputation in MLS that when the lights are bright and the game is the biggest, they perform each time. You're always used to when you're in Seattle, kind of the thunderclap as the teams start to walk out. This was different. There was a vibe, there was kind of a pressure inside of the stadium. Now this is going to be something to experience. The colors, vivid, the noise, record-breaking, like the size of the crowd. How do you want to establish dominance? How do you want to set the tone? A couple tough tackles. A, a good amount of possession. That's what we expected from Seattle. That's not what we got from Seattle in that first 45 minutes. We had it all dialed in, and then you know, then the game happened and Toronto happened. It's ragged from Seattle. It's threatening from Toronto. It's been all Toronto. Seattle is on the ropes. Osorio. Stefan Fry in MLS Cup. You know the story. Gotta make a save, you make a save. Benazé. This is the goal. This is that moment. And all of a sudden, it's bop, down. If he doesn't make that save, everything changes. It certainly kind of gave the defense a little bit more confidence at a moment in time where defensively we weren't that good. And at that point, Alan Chapman blows his whistle to draw to a conclusion, a fascinating half. It's not been what Seattle would have intended nor indeed hoped for. At halftime, Brian Smetzer would be a look in his eye of disbelief. He looked shocked. Toronto's put us under some pressure. They've kept possession. We need to get the crowd more into it. We need to create more possession, more chances, and get them into it. 
You know, we often talk about supporters and how they affect games. And you know, we always hear this idea of the 12th man of Seattle, the 12th man. What does that mean? If you don't experience, you don't know. We experienced it. But as they came out of halftime, you could just feel that the Sounders fans knew that this was their time. And the momentum, it just shifted. It's the Sounders nil, Toronto FC nil in a KG final of which Toronto have played the more threatening part to this point. With that kind of crowd momentum, I think the team started to garner a little bit more confidence. Ladero. Now this is Jones. And it's Rui Diaz. It's dug out for Leardam. Kelvin Leardam, it's an own goal! That's football, that's soccer. You know, sometimes you just need one play to go their way. When I think about that, goal that Kelvin scored, you know, it released all the pressure. Well, I think Toronto FC would admit at that point that they were scrambling. You know, their game plan had gone out the window. I could see their team reeling a little bit after that first goal. And when Victor came on, that was the additional spark that we needed to really get after Toronto. Victor Rodriguez, the former Barcelona junior. Victor Rodriguez, we've known since he's come to Major League Soccer, has the capability of turning a game on top of his head. No, lo que más me acuerdo de, de ese momento, esa semana previa, estuvimos hablando con Victor porque ya sabíamos que él después de ese partido se volvía, se volvía para España y no iba a seguir más con nosotros. Y hablamos toda la semana que teníamos que, que hacer un gol juntos. Creo que teníamos que terminar de una manera feliz y, y él se lo merecía más que nadie. Svensson. Rodriguez, oh, beautifully done. Smooth, sweet, guided into the bottom corner. What a layoff from Nicholas Ladero. When you watch that goal in slow motion, watching his face, there's a moment of concentration. There's the moment of realization and then the elation of knowing all of that pressure, everything that's happened outside of the game, that that moment, it's all completely worth it. And maybe the clinching moment for Seattle Sounders on home turf. Yo desde que piso el, el campo siempre estoy intentando marcar un gol más allá de que estemos ganando o estemos con un resultado de gran diferencia. A guy like Raúl Ruiz Díaz, he's an antagonistic little gnat, and the worst part about him, he never stops. Here comes Ruiz Díaz through the middle to crown it for Seattle. Creo que ese gol fue, fue lo más lindo o fue el gol más que más grité en todo, todo mi carrera desde que estoy en Seattle, ¿no? Pure goal scorer. And that's why he's worth every penny that Seattle paid for him. I think Raul's goal kind of certainly made us feel at ease. But, you know, Josie's goal there at the end was just a reminder that you cannot take anything for granted. You must play the game all the way through until the referee blows the final whistle. Out it all! It's one back. It's surely too little too late. And every single Toronto fan and every single Toronto player will ask themselves the question, what if? The final moments certainly were emotional. You keep looking at the clock, you're looking at your watch. Seattle about to wipe away the lingering pain of defeat in Toronto two years ago. So many of those players on duty again today. And here's Ladero. And the referee decides that enough is enough. That is the sound of the Seattle Sounders' success. They have climbed the mountain. And now our masters of all that they survey. It feels pretty surreal. When I reflect back on my career, I'm going, man, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty fortunate. I'm pretty lucky. Se hizo algo diferente porque era el momento que teníamos para hacer historia, jugar en frente de nuestra gente y la verdad que fue increíble. Nos dio mucha confianza y por suerte pudimos levantar la copa con todos ellos. A classic day in Cascadia. A thunderous atmosphere. As Nicolas Ladero leads 
the celebrations for the Seattle Sounders. I think they had great pride, Toronto FC, to make the final. They have that one star over their badge, but they feel like they should have more. Seattle and Toronto, these two teams set the bar. And the bar is set by ambition, and that is the new MLS. You have to build a club, a squad, a group that is bigger than one, two, three players. From the top down, both these clubs did it the right way, and they reaped the rewards. I wouldn't be surprised to see Toronto FC and Seattle Sounders in many MLS Cups to come. They are teams that spend money. And we're seeing in Major League Soccer, you've got to get difference makers on the field. And Toronto FC and Seattle Sounders have many of them. There's something to be said for that big game experience. And I don't think any of us are ever going to say that, yeah, I don't think Toronto goes through, or I don't think Seattle gets through this round, because they've proven all of us wrong. Want to see some more of this? Check out these goals over here. Hit subscribe to get all of our videos. Oh, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you're gonna get, you're gonna get.